Yeah, so I, I was just uh, reminiscing about, you know, 1995 or something like that. I think I think that's when you were on Ecunet and you were doing, you were doing, uh, I guess. Oh my work. goodness, God Talk in America, Dave. Yes, that, right. Long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And and so you wrote me on Ecunet and said, I said, and you said you were interested in using some of the stuff that I had had written, and yeah. if if so. How do you do that? Because it, you know it was in the early days of citation of internet sources, and so I, exactly. I had to go look that up myself, you know, and say, okay, you do it. <laughs> I guess you do it this way, and then um, and then that came out just prior to my moving to Nashville to work for the publishing house. <laughs> and 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 I remember toward the end of the talk, and also toward the end of the Great Emergence book, um, you know, you asked the question, you know, where then is our authority? Right now, yeah. Right yeah. now, it's our authority. Yeah, and 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 so you know, I I had come across the the idea of how text kind of changed its form, you know, for, for you know, it, it, you know that it started out, you know, communication between humans. It was oral, and that's the way that things were passed, you know, for years and years. Yes, and then writing technology came along yes yeah you know, and and so words became more and more text and not spoken words yes. and, and even in the beginning of the of the of the writing text it was meant to be heard, you know read aloud and heard and so it was still pretty closely attached to words as in oral yeah, and yeah. Oh. That, and then the printing press really accelerated that that motion toward words as text, and you know, and read in isolation. Yes. So, you know, so, so you know, back to the you know the notion of authority. You know, you know how much how much impact does it have for the the immute? Uh, if I can say this word, the immute. The immutability of a text, you know, how, how ensconced it is in the on the on the surface that it's put, you know, how hard it is to do that. So, you know, if you're going to do that, you want to do it right and get it so where it's going to last a long time, so that it can last through its its transportation to whoever, whoever you wanted to get it to. Yeah. And so, you know, Paul's letters were somewhat like that, you know, where where they got to, you know after weeks or months of travel after he had written it to get to where he wanted to send it. And then by the time they read it, you know, he had written that who knows how long ago. And, you know, the authority that that has as a, you know, you know this took a long time to get to us oh, yeah. to write, you know, and, every, and everything. So, and now we have this almost instantaneous um, interaction ability which also the had. shift to the visual away from the verbal uh, so much communication now is done by iconographic transmission and um, by just pure movie and film so that we've done to, to finish the spectrum that you were just outlining yeah from totally oral to oral to visual uh, and we've really gone um, visual now where the um, I mean, one of the characteristics of emergence Christianity is its increased visuality, right? Uh, or yes. its conveyance by, by symbol, and, and which makes our Greek Orthodox brothers and sisters quite happy. They say they discovered that a thousand years ago. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> and they're quite right. Much of the appeal of Orthodoxy yeah, is, is, is iconographic, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the, I looked over at my shelf because I remembered we had a... We had a course at United Seminary when I was in the communications program there. Gregory Gothels, the Electronic Golden. Of course. Cat. Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> and she and she came and uh, visited us once, and so we talked, you know, for a couple of days yeah. about just that issue. Yeah, and then there, you know, there was, um, you know, one of the formative texts for me in this whole idea of the of the evolution of words and text was uh, Orality and Literacy by Walter Ong and then the yes, um, yes. Eisenstein and the printing press and the church. Mm -hmm. It was yes. Eisenstein. So, yeah, yeah I, you know, I had also gotten out the, I have a, I have a Kindle version of 
Emergence Christianity on, on my Kindle here. I've been, uh, just about everything I've read in the past six months is, is, has been through that medium. Um, you know, so the, uh, there was, there was a, a, a book experience I was, you know, that sort of precipitated my getting in contact with you. You know, we had talked about this back, you know, r you know right after Wild Goose. Because oh, yeah. after I talked to you, uh, you know, just after the, the festival was over, I realized as I was going home, I said, wow, I didn't, I didn't ask the question that I've been waiting, you know, wanting to ask her for two years, you know, to, <laughs> you know about the, you know, the authority yeah. and the text. And, and, and so like a, uh, over the past couple of weeks, I heard people talking about a book and so I went and got it. It's called The, uh, the Singularity is Near. Is Ray Ray Kurzweil, yes. And so, yeah. and 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 you know, ninety nine percent of that, you know, pretty much fascinated me. The, the only the the one percent that that I you know continued to say, well, what about this? He never really got to in the book. And then so I went and got, you know, the, 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 this. How, I don't know if you can see I can't that. See it. Oh, the how to create a mind. How to create a mind, create yes. a mind which is which is more, I guess, on, along the subject of. What his conclusion is is that we can reverse engineer the brain. The more we can re reverse engineer and image things and see what's going on, then we can duplicate, you know, the those finer elements of intelligence. And so, you know, while I'm with him on nanobots and you know how computers are getting smaller and smaller, more and more powerful, cheaper oh, yeah. and cheaper, that you know we'll have, you know, perhaps within 25 or 30 years, you know, nanobot medical technology and and now i'm sure it's going to take that long just to tell you the truth there's yeah. a new article well anyway go ahead yeah no no i mean uh, it, it just yeah i um uh, curse wheel it, it, he's been at this a long time right yeah uh and and so he has uh a sort of track record people people will tend to say oh yeah sure you know mm -hmm. uh and and pass it off. It's a lot harder to pass on, and and that's not fair of them in any way. But those of us who've stayed around a long time, kind of have overexposed ourselves, maybe, um, and lost some of our um, uh, impact, if you will. Um, but it's a lot more difficult to to naysay folk like Nick Bostrom at Oxford, for instance, mm -hmm. or, or Vita Moore. Um, um, yeah, I don't think there's any question that the singularity is is going to. Uh, if it's 2050 before it gets here, I'll be amazed. Well, yeah. and it also depends on what you call the singularity, how right. you define it. Right. Um, you know. But um, yeah, because he, yeah. You know, the way he defines it, it, it's sort of undefined, and, and that's sort of where the, where the word came from. It, it comes from mathematics, where you know, if you know one over x and as x approaches zero, then you get higher and higher. And yeah. it, so there's no defined moment, you know, by exactly. definition in that. Exactly. Is that you yeah. just continue to get further and further away from where we are now, because it, and 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 it, and it, you know it, it reaches a point where well you have no idea what you know what it's going to be by the time you get there. <laughs> That's you right. know, which is the same way with you know pr the, the way people thought about technology in the first place, and in in, oh, yeah. in in it being any part of you know improving human life, people resisted you know that. You know, oh, yeah. just like they did with the printing press, and <laughs> I'm sure that there were probably Luddites, you know, concerning writing things down. I mean, yeah. some, some people might even say, well, given the fact that Jesus never said anything or appeared to give a hoot about whether or not anybody wrote anything down that he said. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know. So there you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, the, the whole business, I'm basically... Uh, the nearer I get to coming off the road, okay, the bolder I get with really yeah. being willing to say. <laughs> I did not realize I lacked boldness before, but I am discovering perhaps I pulled some punches along the way, and I'm pulling fewer now. Might as well go out in a ba uh, blaze of glory, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I think that the singularity thing is picking up a lot of public traction, if you will, or, or public conversation uh, traction, because uh, of, of men, for instance, like Steve McIntosh, um, or even if you want to go back a while, uh, Ken Wilber, or even you can go back to Deschardins, to Yard Deschardins, oh, yeah. where the argument is, and it's a persuasive one to me, that we're about to make a major evolutionary l uh, lurch forward. Um, 
that will change the nature to some extent of who we are. And it's the first time we have gone self-consciously, uh, self-awarely, awarely, uh, through a major lurch. I think fantastic is it, you know, Star Wars, whatever. <laughs> fantastic as it, it may sound, I think they may be right. There's there's some hard science here that is very difficult to unsay. You look at Daniel Dennett. You look. I mean, it doesn't matter whom you look at. Um, too many sober scientists with far more to lose than I have in terms of public presence or academic credibility mm -hmm. are saying this is what's happening. Um, and we sure don't know what consciousness is. There's, we have not known since Lou's first proposed emergence theory in, what, 1870. Uh, we've not known what consciousness is, and now we're monkeying with it. Um, yeah. I think it's an exciting time to be alive. It might be a very nice time to leave, too. <laughs> it gets too complicated. But, yeah. I, I think leading right into this, you know, and, and this whole idea of, you know, what words mean or, or and, 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 you know, to what extent can they be, you know, se separated from their, you know, original you know their origins as spoken things is you know like in three or four hundred or three thirty or whenever it was the council of trent and the and the establishment of the canon I, I've, I've written a few blog posts about the you know what i thought coming out of the reading of the singularity ideas and that there's a you know i think the canon the establishment of the canon was uh, was an idea that was sort of based in technological problems the, yeah. that that you have you know like we were talking about before the the, the 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 separation of the text from from spoken words and then how that affects you know the sense of authority that it seems to bring because it's you know hard fought yeah. hard to do you got to preserve it so, you know and so you know what were they thinking in 330 because i mean they put things in there four different gospels that you know that that tell things slightly differently especially john yeah you know and you have oh, yeah when asubius got that mandate from constantine in 331 um you know he immediately i mean got the request from mm -hmm. the emperor that's a mandate right right and, and he immediately <laughs> wrote back and said i'll be happy to produce the 50 books for the new churches if you'll tell me which books uh to include and uh, you know it like it or not constantine had a dog in that fight Mm -hmm. uh, and he, yes, there was there was work beforehand, but it was Constantine who actually wrote back to Asubius, "Here are the twenty-seven books I want in my churches." Mm. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's authority, baby. Right, <laughs> 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 and that's how it happened. I'm, there's no question about it. Uh, that's not to say that church fathers hadn't been involved. It's not to say they hadn't been arguing about it. Of course they had. But nonetheless, it's the emperor who draws up the list mm. and signs it with the imperial seal. And there it is. Yeah. I, yeah. I was about to ask you, I said, do you, do you think Constantine, you know, ha had any inkling in mind about, you know, this idea of, you know, that, that there's a conversational mode to it and that you got to have these different, these different aspects, you know, of the gospel included? Or, or was that the people that you said had an input into what he thought, and, they, and he said, and he finally said, said "Okay, we'll we'll include this because you said that, because we'll include that because you said that." I'd love to know. Yeah, I'd love to know. <laughs> I I um, opened that bag of worms um, with a <laughs> with the presbytery, with the clergy of a presbytery, and I thought they were going to eat each other up. Um, they completely forgot I was standing there. You know, I was just watching the back and forth. Uh, that's a rough one. Who knows? I mean, you know, uh, we can sit here and theorize forever, um, but. Who, who really knows what, what came into play. Mm -hmm. The only thing we're sure of is that Constantine said to Asubius, when the dust was all died down, these are the 27. Yeah. And that's as near to a, a canon, I suppose, as, yeah. as we really got. But one of the things, I mean, you know this as well as I do, one of the things that's uh, going to happen over the next couple of decades, I'd say, mm -hmm. we're going to look again at the canon. Um, and see, maybe not to change it per se, but to consider 2,000 years ago when we went through the great transition or transformation and temple Judaism 
was and rabbinic came temple yeah. was destroyed you know that one of the things that began immediately became the mishnah right the talmud um, it comes out of that transition when you get the Mishnah and then you, uh, by 200 or something and then you get uh, the Gemara which was not a change in uh, Jewish canon but it certainly was uh, addition to it or incorporation into sacred stature or semi-sacred stature of some things and that's going to happen in Christianity before before very long I suspect you know um, people now want to know what Clement had to say, you know. But talk about origin. Um, Irenaeus is not an odd name anymore. Um, and uh, Clement of Alexandria, geez, he matters. Justin Martyr, he studied with or was trained by a man who was trained by uh, the Apostle John. Why wouldn't we want to know what he had to say? Um, so, But it's a matter also of we've, we've got the stuff now. And yeah. it got lost, as you say, you know, it got lost. So, and how much authority we will give to that, who knows. Yeah. But there must be, a, you know this probably better than I do, a 10 um, relatively new, just since 1999, not 2000, along there, of the Didache. Excuse me? Why in the world would anybody want the Didache? Because it's the first prayer book or liturgical book or whatever. Of Christianity, and today's Christians want to know what that was like. Um, it's a fascinating. It's fascinating to watch it. Hmm. Jack Spong. Jack Spong, bless his bones. It, what an insightful man he's been over the years. I chased it down once. I think Dale, it was '69. I believe it was 1969 when Jack Spong uh, first. It may have been '63. I don't know. But anyway, is that Shelby? Is that is that? And that's is Jack Shel John Shelby Spong. Yes, yeah. who has been. Right, so many times. But anyway, he said, to understand what's going on, we have to understand that the, the Christians who are coming are catacomb Christians. And I, I still think it's one of the most insightful single sentences. Uh, going, that's right, they're catacomb Christians. Um, same passion, same um, kind of, of, in our case, neo-primitivism that adds energy and... Uh, real devotion and I don't know uh, but he's right and the Didache is right there up there proving he's right hmm. so, so do you think do you think it ought to be closed uh, I think our Jewish brothers and sisters are very wise in a number of ways as yeah. a matter of fact not not the least of which is we don't have to get rid of what we have right but we can indeed uh, add under a separate set of covers yeah. if you will uh, but with the sanction of good theological and prayerful discernment, uh, yeah. we can indeed... The, the, the shepherd of Hermas, I hope to never see again. I made my way through that thing to it. But um, I agree. Uh, Clement should be heard. I think Justin Martyr had things to say that we need, need to be aware of. I'm not even sure uh, some of the things that, for instance, the Jesus Seminar or Karen King or some of those, uh, Elaine Pagels, have dealt with will come into play. That's interesting to me. I, I think the Gospel of Thomas probably isn't what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think what we're talking about is that first and second century uh, list of things. And, and some things that we just didn't have, obviously, in the fourth century. We'd lost them. But mm -hmm. the, the near heretical... Uh, books or the ones that change. No, I don't. I don't think that's what we're talking about. I think we're talking about the enrichment of, and the commentary by those for whom it was second hand or third hand at the most. That's that's real proximity, and it needs to be honored. Yeah. yeah. So you fun know, times. <laughs> so you know, relating related to you know, canon closed or not, you know, like you know, Paul sends his letters. You know, and and then they, you know, I'm sure. I mean, they had to have been talking about what that said, you know, after they read it. And then, so you know, had they been able to, you know, be on a Skype call yeah. with with Paul with his thoughts that he just had written down a couple of months ago, and then they they're just now reading them. You know, if they had had the idea or or the opportunity to you know, to push right back or to, you know, give reaction, then would Paul have 
wanted to publish the whole, you know, mm -hmm. his thing with their comments underneath it, and then, you know. You know, you're making an interesting point, and I had never thought about it before. It, I don't know whether it's original with you or whether I just, you know, have it. But you're absolutely right. The the immediacy with which we exchange ideas now uh, affects those ideas hugely. And I, I just never thought about it before. Um, whereas the the serious lag time, as you were just saying, mm -hmm. lag time between its writing and its being read um, did indeed affect the thing. I'm, hello, new idea. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, you're you're absolutely right. And and my mind was also jumping um, when you get to the Pauline canon. And and I do I, I can sit here and say I don't think we're going to change the canon. And then even as I hear myself say that, I'm thinking. You look, for instance, at the apostolic letters mm -hmm. that we're pretty sure weren't Paulinian. Uh, you yeah. know, they weren't. Yeah. Um, they date from a later time when, and they're basically ecclesial house cleaning, aren't they? I mean, it, it, they are. And and it's, some, for instance, of, of Timothy and Titus absolute, absolutely contradict the original letters that we know are Paulinian. Um, so we may, uh, you know, there's neither uh, male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, followed then by let no woman speak in church in the apostolic letters uh, or epistles, they're sometimes called. So there's real uh, inconsistency. And, of course, none of us has ever been inconsistent in what he or she has written over the years. But, <laughs> but these, are, these are major inconsistencies. So it may well be that it's time to look um, yeah. Yeah. Well, at, at some of what old Constantine let us Take in whole cloth. Yeah. Well, you, and, you, and you mentioned, you know, about being inconsistent that, you know, I mean, how many times do you think maybe Paul, you know, had, had sent this thing and then he saw what came of it, you know, how people and, took and it? And changed his mind, of course. Yeah. And, and he said, no, that? wait a minute, I mean, that's not exactly what I said. And, and, oh. <laughs> and I, see that, I see people do that with news commentators all the time. He said, well, so-and-so said this. And then you go, I said, well, if you go and ask them, because I've heard them say this, you know, over here. If you go and ask them, you know, did you mean that? Did you really mean that? Well, no. You know, and so, yeah. you know, what does that do the to the authority of you know, something that's been taken? You know, <laughs> my youth minister would, uh, no, it was Grady Nutt. You remember Grady Nutt? Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, he yes. was on Hee Haw, yes. but he was, you know, he, he, was uh, he went to Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and he did yeah. uh, like a comedy bit and, you know, so... It, he he was talking about inerrancy and 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 um, verbal inspiration, and he was saying, you know, I, I can just see Paul in the, in the, in in the uh, in the prison, you know, and it's dark, and he's and he's writing he's writing stuff down. He can hardly see, and somebody says, "What are you doing?" He goes, "He goes, I'm writing." He goes, "What are you writing?" I don't know, but I think it's First Corinthians. <laughs> Yes, which puts it in perspective, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> it does, you know. <laughs> I was, I, I started out talking to you about Acunet, and and um, you know, I loved that thing. Oh yeah, it really was wonderful, wasn't it? Yes, yes. I mean, I I had fun on Acunet. I actually looked forward to it every day. I don't look forward to email every day, and God knows I don't look forward to Facebook um, every day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had just contacted or you know tried to you know contacted a couple of people on Acunet in the past couple of weeks because I was looking for. I had a meeting on there that lasted three or four years and they had about 500 correspondences in it, and I called it a CompuServe for the church. Which you know that's when I started that that was that was the online world was CompuServe, AOL, and Prodigy. You got it. And 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 then you know and then you had things like Ecunet which was more like the well, you know, it had its own system. You know, you basically just dialed up on the modem, downloaded your stuff, and then looked at Absolutely. it and then uploaded it, you know, your responses back. I mean, Ecunet was just like, I mean, I remember the first time I started getting involved in that, it was like, you know, this, this sense of, you know, it was an ecumenical experience that was just, you know, able to be had all the time. I remember, I, you know, my first church job was a, uh, a youth ministry job in a little town in Iowa, in a, in a Baptist church in Iowa. 
and it was such a refreshing thing to be able to go to a, a yeah. like a, a state youth ministers meeting yes you know yes. where you had a lot more diversity than you could find in Keokuk Iowa which you know I mean could be had it was just hard and then you know to come and then 10 years later there was this ecunet where you had you know the opportunity every day to interact with those people that you know normally you'd have a once a year you know you have to go mm -hmm. 200 miles to you know get there kind of a thing and 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 and, and so these, these ideas i was having about the online world i couldn't have stood up in an ecunet meeting in dayton with all those people there and, and started saying that i'm thinking about this it, it's just you know I, I wasn't that bold yeah yeah but when i was able to just start writing that and then some you know all these people came back and said yeah that's you know that, that's pretty interesting you know say more about that and it just it just yeah. kind of took off from there yeah it's a whole different world in every yeah. way well they just speak in cliches and, and so you know they, they didn't say i mean everything that was on there all the meetings all the you know all, all the all the people's notes and everything like that no longer exist they didn't back what? it they, whoa 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 what do you mean they no longer exist? The all all the I mean you can't get the copies of anything that were that were done over those fifteen years. It's all gone. I, I, are you <laughs> sure? I didn't know that. I mean, I that's don't what, know where I thought they were in the cloud they somewhere. No, I mean, as far as I know, I mean, it, and I talked to a couple of people that were you know like in, in on the technical, you know, hey, it, it, it just kind of blew my mind that that's it's gone. Awful. <laughs> So, you know, I'm sure but I can find know, somebody eventually that, that, like, because I downloaded notes into my email and I have I was going to say, yeah, and, and it was the floppy disk era. Yeah, see, that's and, the problem. <laughs> it's getting I, well, those but back out. And, but I don't know whether I've thrown away. That's, uh, uh, I'm stunned. I, I, that's, an, uh, that's a huge loss. Yeah, it that's is. That's a loss of, of 15 years of formative information about what was happening in Christian thought. Sure. As the... I'll have to chase down. I remember a conversation six or eight months ago about those floppies aren't worth anything. There's not even a machine that can read them anymore. Right. Am I saying I don't believe that? Yeah. And I think they got, they may have got past the archives or they may have been thrown out. Yeah. But I kept that stuff. I. Yeah, and I did too. Except I, you know, I've got the same problem. I've got five and a quarter and three and a half inch floppies on which I found a few things, but I still don't have all 500 notes of the CompuServe for the church. I've got like a, a, a notebook that's like this thick, that's like printed out pages that has well, yeah. up, up to a certain point, which is near the end. But I still don't, I still want more than just, you know, printed out pages because then I'll have to scan those, and, you know, to, to, to reuse those. Of course. You know, to post them online. Well, so. I mean, do you even have anything that can read a floppy now? I mean, I'm sure somebody does somewhere, but I don't. Yeah, my, my my daughter's computer in her room is the only computer in the house that has a floppy drive, you know, that's connected. And I that's how I found some of the stuff. But, and, and you know, th there are some, like, adapters that you can get that, you know, connect to the, to the old yeah. interface on the three and a quarter, I mean, three and a half and five and a quarter inch floppies that have a power supply that, that end up in a, you know, like the, the the power connector that you have for those drives, so that you can, and then and then it plugs into a USB port, so okay. that you can read those through your computer's USB interface. Oh, for done, heaven's sake! I've done that with hard drives, but I, this came up. You know, th th this this thought arose when I was reading the Singularity because he was talking about how that's a that's a problem when you, know, when you start talking about saving information from their you know, from a particular person's brain, you know, and it's not, you know, he's, you know, he's going toward the end of, you know, being able to download and then upload into a machine, yeah. you know, that type yeah. of idea. He said, you know, you, you got the problem of those, you know, and he mentioned, you know, all these old formats, tape backups and floppy drives. And then, you know, hard drives that we have now are, you know, 10 years from now, they've oh, already, yeah. they've already got SSD drives. Sure. You know, so, you know, there's always that, and, you know, part of the, part of that will be solved as future systems automatically know that there's a cloud and that there's going to be new formats and they continue to save it to the, you know, to the latest format that can be read now. Yeah. And then when something else comes along, then they start, you know, uh, converting that to the new system. 
you know, so that that's not something we have to worry about anymore. But that's not the case right now. So. I just, it never occurred to me, Ekinets, I mean, that was good stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, some of it wasn't, but that was good stuff. A yeah. lot of it, you know, was conversing and that kind of thing. But yeah. a lot of it was good stuff. Never occurred to me it wasn't somewhere. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's, I expect or suspect that probably a bulk of it is probably on the computer that I was using at the publishing house. And then I left there and, you know, probably got wiped off. You know, where are you now? I'm in, I'm still in Nashville. After, after I know the that. publishing house, uh, it's in Laverne, Tennessee. It's Rutherford County, Tennessee. You know, Murphy. I, I know you're in Laverne, but I mean, when you you left the publishing house, then, then oh, what? Oh, oh, oh. The, the, uh, I was off for like a year and a half, did some odd things, and then I went to United Methodist Communications for another five and a half years. Okay. And then that ended in 2009. Basically, you know, because there were a bunch of layoffs when the economic oh, yeah. problems started. And so I've been doing odd jobs since then, you know. Okay. So. All right. Now, I know you were in Laverne. Yeah. But, yeah. The book capital of the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do have that, what, the, the, the Amazon uh, shipping, yeah, I, shipping yeah. facility there, here. It, it, huge facility. I haven't been to Laverne in, oh, I don't know, three or four years, but it really is a kick to go. I imagine <laughs> if you live there, you get used to it. <laughs> yeah. But if you're passing through and you're a book person, you just you want to bow three times to the east. But then, then, then I have to drive 30 or 40 minutes to get to a bookstore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess that's Murfreesboro true. is the closest one now. There's yeah, I, I, one of our sons lives in Murfreesboro. Oh. And... Uh, so we go in and out of there but once in a while. And yes, they do. They've got a decent one. But uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's a whole bunch though, Bubby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a, um, a uh, and if you can see this or not. Uh, well, it's sort of in the background there, I guess. The, I, I've got, this is on my laptop because I've got Skype installed on there. So I've got it maximized on the screen. And I've got my video camera back there pointing at the yeah. screen I've got the audio outputs into the camera I've got and then I've got an audio output into my desktop computer where I've got a Google Hangout where a guy that I talked to yesterday about the singularity because we had been talking online about it, uh, Jason Kalina yeah and he and when I told him that I was going to talk to you tomorrow uh, you know yesterday you know, I was talking to him yesterday and I said I'm going to talk to Phyllis tomorrow and he goes he goes really he and he, he said he said tell her I'm a fan and so <laughs> you know he, he, he's over there I see him on the, uh, I don't know if he wants to say anything or not. Can you hear me, Jason? I, I can hear you. I can't actually hear Phyllis, so I've only... Oh, you oh, can't hear Phyllis? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's too bad. Is the, is the, so the audio from that is not getting to you at all? Yeah, unfortunately. Well, uh, well hello, Jason. Let me see here. Let me... Oh, do you want to interrupt your conversation with Phyllis? I can, I can always chat with you later. Yeah, because yeah, it is on. I'd hate for you to go into tech support mode in the middle of this call. <laughs> can, can you hear? I can hear him beautifully. Can you hear that now? I just heard her now. Okay, yeah, because I, okay. I unplugged yeah, I the audio. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, see, that, that that's something that will just, you know, also get easier to do, where you can, because you got, you know, between Google Hangouts and Skype, and then I'm the third party that's, you know, yeah. connecting the two. But yes, yeah, yeah Google. having I, a meeting in Second Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to plug this back into my audio here again. Okay. Well, that was, I should, I should say I could have texted to him and said, are you getting this, you know, through, because yesterday it worked. Yeah. One of my audio outputs is going straight into the. Anyway, so that's okay. Things. I was I was skyping uh, Darkwood Brew a uh, Sunday night, happy as a clam, and then just all of a sudden it, right in the middle of whatever it was, it went crashing down. I've done that show what yeah. two, three, four times in no problem, and the only thing we could figure out was we were having an ice storm then too, uh, but mm -hmm. it had all been carefully set up. You know, three thirty you go in, everything's fine, don't touch anything, good. At five o'clock you start talking. 507, gone. Wow. Couldn't hear them. They couldn't hear me. It was very, <laughs> it's only as good as whatever. 
<laughs> anyway, go back to Singularity long enough for me to, to ask you something. Okay. Um, Ryan Bolger at Fuller yeah. is, is a genius. That's, that's what Ryan Bolger is anyway. Yeah. But he turned me on to a couple of people in uh, the whole Singularity idea that I found really kind of interesting. Do you know Elia um, Delio? Do you know who I'm t of whom I'm speaking? Uh, I L I A Elia uh, Delio D E L I O. You might look at what she's doing. Um, it's and, and, and Beatrice uh, uh, Bruto. Elia Delaro. Uh, uh, it's I L I A. And then the last name is D E L I O. She's a Franciscan sister, and she's at Woodstock Theological, and they're doing some. You're Googling, I take it, right? I'm, 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 I'm typing, I'm, oh, I'm okay. making a note of it in Notepad. So the last name is, D, how you spell it? D-E-L-I-O. D-E-L-I-O, okay. Uh-huh. And okay. he's absolutely right, as he tends to be. I mean, he Ryan. But, and Beatrice uh, Berto is worth looking at, too. They give a a theological spin to it. I mean, obviously, a Franciscan sister is going to do that. They they add a, a theological depth to the conversation. What was the, worth, what was the second name? Uh, Beatrice Bruto. B R U T E A U. Bruto. Some people say. I think. B R U. Uh huh. B R U T E A U. Okay. Okay. And I'm not sure whether it's Bruto or Bruto, but. But it's Beatrice for sure. But you know, I mean, if nothing else, just give them a quick look um, and see if it clicks or if it fits with what you're thinking about with the Kurtzwill material. Okay. Yeah, I I, 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 I found myself being being a little frustrated with the the lack of input on the you know like I I did about seven or eight posts over the last couple of weeks, you know. Kind of bouncing around on on the on the singularity ideas and you know sure and it, yeah. I write a you know I have a, a, a couple of titles of those posts that it says you know it, to me to me the social singularity is a, is a lot more you know imminent and it, Noam Chomsky was interviewed by somebody and somebody asked him about the singularity and and what he said I I pretty much agreed with he he was a little bit more dismissive than I am. Of the idea, you know, because he said, you know, it, it's it's pretty much science fiction. He says, he says, you know, the, the human brain is 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 too complex. I mean, he, he's saying that about, the, you know, the idea of, of yeah. re replicating human consciousness. And he said, you know, and and it's more important to use the technology that we have to try to solve the problems that we have, like you know, global climate change. Yeah. And and you know and 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 I said yeah that's that's true you know that that you know we do you know, we're a lot closer to social singularity because you're not dealing with you know the 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 issue of whether or not something is is fully human or not you're you know when, in social singularity you're talking about communications between people who are undeniably human <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's and it's the taking of their communications and the, and the experience of the communicative conversation mm -hmm. and, and getting more and more of the of the realisms of that involved and, and of course that's Chomsky's you know yeah main song I mean he's been doing a Lord I can remember even before I was in graduate school like undergraduate I was being you know indoctrinated into Chomsky uh, and, and his, his theories of language and communication all of, most of which turned out to be very sound scholarship and theory but yeah, yeah. now I think um, that our major problem right now well, what do I know but from what I, it seems yeah. to me that one of the major problems is that the heat problem um, you just can't our cooling system inside our heads uh, is so much more efficient than anything we've been able to create in a lab, and until we can hit, uh, you know, fix the the overheating problem, yeah. we really are hung. Yeah. Because um, a computer uses far too much. Yeah. Uh, and, and creates far too much heat. Yeah. Well, that, uh, and that's one of the things that that Kurzweil talks about in of there. Of course, it's a yeah. major problem. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and he was he was talking about reverse. 
I don't know. Even at the level I'm at, I don't fully understand about re reverse processing, which yeah. has to do with taking the energy that's produced and cycling, recycling that back into reducing the amount of yeah. heat. You know, yeah. just, just, just like it's pretty much like the you know the the high mileage gas or you know hybrid cars. You know, yeah. recycling the energy that you use, like the alternator, sure. the alternator, you know, recycles in, back into your battery as you drive. But, you know, one of my most vivid memories was 1950, oh gosh, 52 or 3, I guess, when the university where my father was academic dean, under his urgency and his urging, East Tennessee State, as a matter of fact, bought the first IBM mm -hmm. uh, to process student debt. And it, it was in a whole room uh, right beside his office. And it was hotter than Hades in there, uh, with, you know, and it, fans going everywhere. Um, and, and everybody was saying, this thing will never work. Uh, it'll do it, what it has to do, but it will never become important or a big part of life because it takes too much energy. It makes too much heat. You have to have too much cooling to make it work. It's, you know, and, and this big clunky thing, it was a room full of machines, all of them whirring around. And I was standing there thinking my father is absolutely insane and knowing <laughs> that if so, it's the first time he's ever been insane. <laughs> and I look now at the thing on my desk. I look now at my iPad, which does far more than that blooming sure. IBM did, you know. Sure. And I think, ah, old man was pretty, pretty astute, you know. I think you have to sort of buy in early um, and with some confidence uh, and, and give it a spin. But anyway... I never will forget walking in that room for the first time and thinking, dear God, what is this? It was so hot, you couldn't believe it. You could not believe it. Oh, <laughs> Those were the days. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Well, it's good to connect with you, my friend. Yeah. And catch up and all that, you know, and behave yourself now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and look, at, look at Elid, uh, uh, at, at Sister uh, Delio. Um, uh, or Dr. Brutal, 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 I'll, I'll learn. I have to ask Ryan, I'm going out to Fuller next month, I have to ask him, please say this word, How, what do you call her, Brutal or Brutal, but anyway, well, take care of yourself. Hey, you too. Okay. All right. Thank you Tell very Jason much. hello. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. I think he heard you now. So. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. All right, bye. Let me find my hang-up button. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Bye. <laughs>